because I like I like editing process. You know, it focuses me. And there's a lot of things you can tell I'm very all over the place. So, uh, but I can sit for like 20 hours and edit. Fucking, I can edit this. Excuse me. I can edit a, like a thousand photos like in a day, where most photographers take a month. Like I could, if I shot, uh, I shoot Comic Con. I'll have this up by Wednesday. Like you know, I work with this guy. He's good. And then, so thank you for coming, by the way. And um, and so like, I, you know, I don't mess around with that stuff. I love it. It's, it's my bread and butter. But my, and to answer your question, whether I want the detail real in the photo or put it in post, it depends on the, the, the situation. So if there's a cosplayer that doesn't have the piece and it's like, oh man, I really need this thing in there, I'll put it in post. But a lot of times I'll use my environment instead of uh, photoshopping the background and just put the effects on top to front and it sort of matches up perfectly in my experience. So. And I kind of want to jump back because we were talking um, about uh, cosplay that we've done. I, I think my favorite one was a, a couple of times ago. Um, I did like Tenth Doctor, like and it was sort of more like Tenth Doctor reference. But you know, I had like all the traffic in the trench. I had my sonic shoes. I had appreciated for the doctor. <laughs> but what I thought was cool was um, was the feelings that go along with it, because cosplay does affect you internally, I think, as well as externally. If you're if you really are into the doctor and you walk around dressed as the doctor, everything becomes a um, ridiculously interesting, quirky experience. You find yourself sort of like interacting through the universe like that. Our dear colleague that's dressed as Harley Quinn has not put her shoes on the floor once, and that's awesome because Harley doesn't sit like that. She sit, she would stretch out. It's, it happens. Like it it does change you internally, and I think there's something awesome about picking characters that make you feel good, um, as well as sometimes picking characters that might make you feel powerful, or might make you, if you want to hide, make you be able to hide. Like those feelings are awesome. I've been toying around actually with um, this Bishop cosplay that I haven't been able to pull together yet. All our stuff is in storage because we're moving. Um, but the thing that I wanted to do with it is I love this idea of heroes hiding in uh, plain sight. So a lot of it that I'm trying to pull together for it is things that you could actually cobble together from other space. It wouldn't be his actual like leather suit and like his long flowy cape. But how would that translate? Maybe a red hoodie, maybe combat boots, maybe uh, an Xavier t-shirt because he goes there to go to school. Um, but whatever it is, even even um, the details like you said of the suit, the feelings that you get will be just as real even if the outside isn't quite where you want it to be yet. I remember what. I was going to say one thing. I remember watching this guy uh, at DC, uh, Austin Con in DC a few years ago who was dressed up as, as Rufio. Oh, yeah, Rufio. And literally could not walk down a hall without every Rufio. time. Rufio. Like, like, everyone was like, Rufio. I did it, and, and I didn't even know I was going to do like, it. I was like, he was just like, kind of just like, he looked like he was bummed. Like, he was sitting yeah. there looking at his phone, and he was kind of just like, whatever. And you heard all these little kids like sh going, Rufio. Rufio. All like stands up straight. Like shakes it off and was like a huge ass, like badass smile. Yeah. And I was like, it, that totally makes your day. It just means like you have no idea. That was also the ooh, that was also the first year that um, the Black Panther cosplay had started to come out. And you know, being a young black kid who loved comics, and my dad's past, but my dad would have loved Black Panther. Yeah. And there was like one dude dressed as Black Panther at Austin Con that year. And I and almost every young black kid and every old black kid actually came up and talked to him, and because of that, he had to be T'Challa that day. Um, he had to be the king, and it's like, that's the awesome thing about cosplay, like those those feelings and those things you can put so, on yourself. I'm sorry, sorry. sorry. Real quick, uh, we're gonna take one more question, but before we do that, uh, this is a little trick that Patrick has taught uh, me, is uh, to take a picture of the audience at every uh, panel that we speak at, so. I can't. I can't. She'll never post. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take pictures. Oh, yeah, so your question. In the um, so, have you guys noticed that there's, a, in cons in general, if you've been to many, or even if this is your first one, do you find that you're seeing a lot more, you know, um, disability or alternate ability? Um, uh, like representation, and um, do you see it going even farther in the future? Short answer is yes. Long answer is 
Yes, we popped up as here at this panel, uh, and this is the fifth year in a row where we're doing it. And uh, over the past five years that we've been doing it, we've seen uh, you know, them add a LGBTQ room, we've seen them add a quiet room, we've seen them add you know, all these different resources. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Um, if you look at things like Lock and Key, um, the comic has a character with a disability, and in the show, that character is represented by an actor who has a disability. We're seeing that in, you know, we're seeing more and more accessi accessibility and um, acceptance and inclusion in real life and, um, and in comics and in society, and that's a huge, huge deal. Um, so, yeah. Do you want to jump on? I was going to say more is always better. Yeah. I, yeah. I definitely, yeah. you know, I mean, and I think, um, I think there's, our people show up in these spaces. Like, I, I, one of my biggest gripes is when I come to cons and I see organizations that are run by non-disabled people, that in some cases actually cause harm to disabled people have a booth. <laughs> and I pick up the phone and I call my friends that run that are disabled folks at run organizations. I'm like, why the hell aren't you at the con? Right. Do you not realize that, that is where our people are? Right. And instead, like they're meeting groups that do electro shock on kids. Instead, like that's the representation in these spaces versus organizations that are run by us and for us. Um, you know, and that's actually where I really want to, like, I see our people come into these spaces, um, but I want to see our organizations show up and, and, pro and, and sponsor rooms and sponsor gatherings and get, to get together. I mean, I work for the Ford Foundation, and I can already imagine having a conversation uh, with New York Comic Con next year and saying, what can, can Ford can we do a reception? Can you know what is it that we can do to help actually bring together community in an in a informal way? Um, you know, and so I'm seeing definitely more of it, but I think that there there is always the possibility for even greater engagement. Because I'd love to see an alternate abilities uh, photo shoot for yeah. everybody's ideas of costumes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, uh, so uh, as I mentioned before, nyccsurvey.com. Put that info, you know, you know, put it there, and then the day after the the day after the show, or even, it might even be the day, it might even be Sunday. New York Comic Con every year sends out an email saying, "Hey, give us feedback for you know, for the show. Do it. Give that feedback. Tell the you know, while you're walking around, tell the staff members there. You know, you know." These are the people that you want to talk to and give those ideas to. Give well, them information. To Joe, if, if I may too. Um, also, put in put in suggestions and requests for for systems and for for workshops. I mean, yeah. we, we got really lucky with AwesomeCon uh, in DC because no one had made any suggestion of a conversation around disability in comics. And so when we put it in, they were like, "Okay, do you guys want to do it?" And we're like, "You're gonna let me." talk about my opinion on comics in front of people. And like, the, other, the other thing you could always do is, you know, apply to create that, to yeah. do that, or that, you're, that either run the panel yourself, yep. or do that meetup yourself. You know, there's nothing stopping you. Because I'd love people. to have somebody have a panel on how to accessorize your wheelchair, or, you know, your alternate ability, talk to, you know. Yeah. Again, Thanks. also, talk to us after the panel. Yeah, yeah. definitely so. Uh, I should definitely, like, yeah. use this. Like Joe was saying, this is an opportunity to build your network. On that note, we do have to wrap up, and I want to thank everyone for being here. I want to thank uh, the, uh, the rest of the panelists who, were, who are normally here, or who weren't able to make it because of the pandemic. And I want to especially thank Repop for having us here. Um, you know, because that's, you know, for five, have it five years in a row. Um, it's, you know, it, it warms my heart, and to me it's just, it's, my blowing and it's unbelievable to me. Like, yeah. Thank you. I just want to add one last word. It's not, it's not a disability, it's a superpower. Get it right. I don't, but I have my
my Twitter handle on YouTube. Yeah. 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 Yeah.